Hello and welcome to worship on this Sunday, November 1st, All Saints Sunday. Following up on last night, All Hallows Eve. I appreciate you tuning in today. As is patently obvious, we are back to virtual worship services for the month of November. December still up in the air, but I welcome you today. And this is the first Sunday of the month. We do a couple of things on the first Sunday of the month. We light a candle for our companion congregation, Reed Pan in South Africa. And I would tell you that there's one over there, but unfortunately I forgot about it until just now. So there isn't one over there, but you can pretend there is. And we also pray for all those folks who have birthdays. In this case, in the month of November, quite a few folks. And uh, we'll name those people. Trent Trulin, Eric Paulson, Jody Gerke, Aaron Randall, Charles Anderson, Seth Trulin, Loretta Nolan, Henry Soybert, Zachary Trulin, Aline Hovey, Tanya Fitzke, Lila Klug, Nicole Melander, David Spangler, Randy Trulin, Amanda Greenenberg, Caitlin Paulson, Jean Troy, Michael Paschal, Justice Pratt, Peter Severson, Terry Swemke, Amber Frostman, Gina Gravine, Jonathan Schuster, Josh Greenenberg, Louise Harder, Caden Paschal, Morgan Boltz, Linda Gravine, and Eldon Kapleen. Every year I wait so I can say Linda Gravine and Eldon Kapleen. <laughs> we continue. Scott A. Strike, David Velker, Caden Chadwick, Dale Knapp, Jesse Rodant, Otto Fitzke, and Rose Rosenau. Let's pray for these folks. Oh God, we know that time marches on whether we like it or not. So we pray that you will be with those who begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom, in hope, in health, and in love. Strengthen their trust in the goodness of life and in the knowledge of your never-ending presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we also pray this evening, or this morning rather, pardon me, for Pam Zahn, continuing in hospice care. Lori, Lori Proc now adjusting to her new uh, medical device. Michael Levesque recovering from surgery. Patrick Plunkett uh, continuing his uh, chemotherapy treatments. Brandon Landreth continuing to make progress as a result of his head, uh, after his head trauma, and Carla Schuett also uh, continuing through chemotherapy treatments. We continue our worship with confession and forgiveness. Gracious Creator, you have given us so much, but too often we take those gifts for granted. You call us to live in caring community, but too often we place our wants and needs first. You call us to share your gifts with the world around us, but too often we are worried that there may not be enough. For all the times when we ignore or misuse your gifts, forgive us. God is gracious in forgiveness and calls us to new life in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one community of faith, following the example of blessed saints who have gone before us. Grant us grace to follow in their footsteps of faithful action and commitment through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The gospel lesson for today is from Matthew chapter 5, and this is Jesus' version of the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes, and this is Matthew's version of those Beatitudes. So I invite you, if you are willing or able, to please stand as we read the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. One of the reasons that I enjoy flying so much, and there are a lot, but one of them is that it enables me to get a different perspective on things, and not necessarily one specific perspective, although it was really cool the other day, I went up to 7,000 feet up above the Maryland Airport and could see Lake Michigan, so that was a neat perspective to have. But just being able to see things in a different way, regardless of whatever the situation might be, is enlightening. I'm, as I think about flying and perspectives, I'm amazed at people who get on an airline and they sit down and the first thing they do is close the window shade. Now, I always get a window seat in one of these days, hopefully soon, I will be able to get back on an airliner. But I sit there in the window seat with my nose pressed against the window looking out the entire flight. But these folks get in there and close the window shade. I mean, for crying out loud, you're in a chair flying through the sky. How amazing is that? Look out. And I think that's one of the lessons that this gospel is teaching us is to look out with a new perspective on life. Well, how do I arrive at that? Well, you're familiar with the Ten Commandments, right? Okay, we'll name one. Honor, what did, I, what did, I, what did you say? Honor your mother and your father. You're absolutely correct. So you're probably familiar with the Ten Commandments, maybe through uh, Confirmation and Luther's Small Catechism which our confirmation group is about to get started in. Maybe you remember the Ten Commandments from the movie starring Charlton Heston. Or maybe you may have seen, I doubt it, but I have shared this story with you before. Maybe you've seen the History of the World Part One with Mel Brooks as Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. And it's a great scene. Mel, as Moses, is standing on top of Mount Sinai, and all of a sudden there's a loud voice from on high, Moses, Moses, this is God, can you hear me, Moses? Hear you, hear you, Found a deaf man could hear you. What did you say? Uh, nothing, nothing, forget it, forget it. So God then tells Moses that he's going to give him the commandments, there's some lightning and smoke, and Moses, or Moses goes behind this rock outcropping, a little bit of more smoke and lightning, and he comes out with three stone tablets in his arms. And he steps up to the top of this stone precipice and calls to the people below, the Lord Jehovah has given us these 15. And then all of a sudden, one slips, falls, crashes to the ground and smashes it to pieces. These ten, these ten commandments for all to obey. Well, I don't mean to make light of it because the Ten Commandments as the central point of the law is serious business for religious folks and most especially for the Jewish people. Through the law, they see their connection with God and uh, therefore, they're obviously important for the Jewish people. They're important for us as Christians as well. Good advice, good rules. 
Don't lie or steal or kill or honor your mother and your father. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Yet ultimately, as Martin Luther reminds us, even though we study the Ten Commandments and even though it's a good idea to follow them, they were given first and foremost to the Jewish people. I'm surprised that Christian groups, you don't hear about it so much anymore, but in the past where Christian groups were lobbying to have the Ten Commandments on the courthouse lawn or wherever. In actuality, Christian groups should have been lobbying to have the Beatitudes on courthouse lawns. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Because the Beatitudes, see, the Beatitudes are not the law. The Beatitudes are the gospel. The Beatitudes are not about what you have to do. And we are constantly, it seems, being told what we have to do. But rather, these Beatitudes as a gospel message remind us of what God is doing for us in Jesus Christ. Just a few verses down the road, Jesus emphasizes this point when he rattles off some of the Ten Commandments and says, You have heard that it was said, but I say to you, Jesus continues, a different perspective on things, a different way of looking at things, and a different way of looking at things not just for the sake of difference, but because in so doing, through an enlightened perspective, through looking out rather than looking in, for keeping that window shade open, you grow stronger in your relationship with God, stronger in your relationship with beingness. And listen how that kind of works, not kind of works, but listen how that new perspective comes about, again, through the words of, the, of Jesus and the Beatitudes, but this time from the message translation. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God. A different way of looking at things. You are blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be completely open to the embrace of the one to whom you are most dear. A different way of looking at things. Blessed are you when you are content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. Different way of looking at things. And then he concludes... Count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you or discredit you. What it means that the truth is too close for comfort. Definitely a different way of looking at things. So the Ten Commandments are worth spending time with. If you can check out your Bible although they're kind of two different places and two different formats, or you can pull out your Luther small catechism, or you can find Charlton Heston and the Ten Commandments, or you can even go to Mel Brooks, but probably not the best advice. And they're good in that they provide sound advice for living. Don't lie or steal or kill. Honor your mother and your father. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Yet, they are still, again, about what you have to do. They are about the law. Yet, in today's gospel message from Matthew, Jesus gives us the Beatitudes. Jesus gives us what God is doing for us. Jesus gives us a new perspective on things. And very often, that new perspective is not easy for us to see and 
again, often is not a popular message because this truth that we get a glimpse of through this new perspective, this truth is often too close for comfort. For again, the truth of our faith is not about what we need to do. Again, we are told from the time we can barely walk until the time we're about to die. We're told what we need to do. But Jesus, in this new perspective on things, tells us what God is doing for us. And that, I believe, is the most important truth. And for heaven's sakes, the next time you get on an airplane, and hopefully that will be sometime fairly soon, and the next time you get on an airplane, leave the window shade up. Any questions? Amen. Our hymn of the day is My Life Flows on an Endless Song. I'll sing, I'll sing the first verse of that. I'll try to sing the first verse of that. I'm not a very good voice this evening. Here we go. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I catch the sweet though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Good message for us these days. Let's continue by declaring our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue our worship with prayers of intercession as we pray for the church, the world, and all of those in need, responding to, Lord, in your mercy, with hear our prayer. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for all whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and to new places. Bless your church around the world as we remember our companion congregation in Pan, South Africa. And bless your church here in this place as we name this morning Sarah Priesig, Jim Nolan, Mike Stubbe, Tanner Walter, Matt Harris, Chuck Eno, Jake Bain, Pastor Dan Sire, Josh Hovey, Julie Levesque, and Dawson Hine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of every place, your creation is wonderful and marvelous, but at times can take a turn toward chaos. And this morning we pray for all of those suffering the consequences of Hurricane Zeta. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand common needs and seek our common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of every blessing, Jesus' healing touch and hopeful words come to those who are suffering in poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. So be with them, Lord, 
Be with those who are suffering illness or going through medical procedures, that they may hear those words of healing and feel that touch. We pray especially for Pam, Lori, Michael, Brandon, Patrick, Carla, and all those we now bring to you in the silence of our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of every venture, anoint this congregation with the spirit of wisdom and courage that will guide us as we navigate our future together amidst the challenges of COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord of every time, we, re we remember the saints you have called and gathered to yourself. In faith, we are confident in their eternal rest. Comfort us as we grieve those of our St. John congregation who have died in this past year. And we will light a candle for those folks. As is our tradition each year on All Saints Sunday, we light a candle for those amongst us who have passed in, uh, I'm out of the way, here I am, who have passed in the last 12 months since last All Saints Sunday, we light a candle in their memory. So we light a candle for Buzz Rosenau, for Leona Wildey, for David Hovey, and for those in your life that you lost this past year and would like to pray for. And with those candles lit, I'm going to play a song. This is by John Prine musician who died of COVID in April, and this is his last recorded song. Hi. I've been down this road before. I remember every tree. Every single blade of grass holds a special place for me. And I remember every town and every hotel room and every song I ever sang on a guitar out of tune. I remember everything, things I can't forget. Turned and smiled on me on the night that we first met. And I remember every night your ocean has a blue. How I miss you in the morning light, like roses miss the dew. this road before alone as I can be careful not to let my past go sneaking up on me got no future in my happiness no regrets are very few sometimes a little tenderness was the best that I could do I remember everything, things I can't forget. Swimming pools of butterflies that slip back to the net. 
So, Lord, we bring these prayers to you, these and all that remains unspoken in our hearts, we bring to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. We'll continue our worship with the offering, and once again, I do genuinely thank you for your continuing financial support of St. John, strange times continue, but your support is appreciated and your support continues. And thank you for that. And we pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours. And we give thanks for the bounty of this world. Help us to share this bounty so that our giving might proclaim your steadfast love in this community and in the world through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. By the witness of your saints, Lord, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race that is set before us through our Savior Jesus Christ as we share this meal together. You are certainly welcome at home. If you have any bread, you can pause the video and grab that bread, any fruit of the vine, grape juice or wine, you can get that as well. And if you would like to share communion virtually with us here this morning. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Supper is prepared and all are welcome. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, we pray. God, you have nourished us by your presence in this meal. Encourage us to go forth, sustained by this giving of grace, so that we may share your love with all, through Jesus Christ.
the giver of abundant life. Amen. Well, thank you once again for joining us here today. Things coming up this week. Again, the sanctuary will be open on Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. for silent meditation and prayer. Wednesday, virtual Bible study will be available for you and confirmation will be on next Wednesday at 6.30 in person. Masks and social distancing takes place. And next Sunday will be another virtual service, but Sunday school will take place at 9.45 in person. Again, masks and social distancing are maintained. No Sunday school today the first because it's a school holiday, so no Sunday school today. But next, next uh, Sunday the 8th, Sunday school will start up again. So as we go out into this week, Exciting week with the election, all that stuff going on, a busy time, I'm sure, for us all. And in the midst of it, I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song, of which I will sing just one verse, is I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else would do. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. And now let us go in peace and live in the love of the Lord. Thanks be to God.